Hello everybody out there and welcome back to another indie comic book review. In this review we got lots of great books this week. We have two books that did not come out this week as you guys already know. And uh, we got three physical and nine digital. It's a very short week. First and last weeks I noticed for, uh, for the month are always a little bit um, yes. light. So the books in this review were released on? May 6, 2015, the first week. May. Well, I just said that it's the first or last yeah, week. First, I don't pay attention. Yeah, Very short that's why. attention span. So, okay. Nightmare World Volume 2, Chapters 10 and uh, 11. And, 11. 12. and this 12. one, uh, <laughs> you know me and this For one. For those about to rock. Yeah, this is definitely my kind of book. And let me tell you what this book's about in this chapter. Basically, this rock and roll dude is trying to call Satan. Well, he wants to become a rock and roll person. So he calls Satan. And basically they have this long conversation. He says to Satan, I want to become this awesome rock and roll guy. So uh, I'm trading my soul to you to become a rock and roll guy. And Satan's like, are you sure you want to do that? But okay. So he does that. And therefore, when he becomes a rock and roll person, well, the devil gets a soul, obviously. So... Yep. Never give a devil your soul, everybody. That's just... Yeah. But he finally became a rock star. And then the next chapter called... The, the Guns Green of Green. Love... Uh, disastrous? Disastrous, yeah. And, uh, oh, by the way, the artwork in the first... In the uh, chapter 11 was good. In this chapter, uh, artwork's a little bit sketchy, <laughs> but it's basically about this guy who wants to shoot... Um, I forgot what her name... Bridget. Because... Uh, the boss told him to kill her because of this whole affair that was going on between them. So, apparently in the end, it seems like he didn't have uh, any bullets to kill her. And they just wind up going off together in the end because they said that... Because Bridget said, when you said that you love me, did you really mean it? And he said that he did. She felt the same way and that's how they got together. And the other guy said to the boss, well, apparently no one, uh, she didn't die and they were off together. So yeah. Mm -hmm. there now is. next week, Michael's going to be. There's one more chapter left of this book. I'm guessing you're gonna do this with chapter one and two of volume three. I, I guess so. Yeah. Well, one chapter. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'll, I'll see how it goes. But uh, all in all, um, really uh, great stuff in this book. Definitely um, love the nightmare world. Okay. All right, tales of mystery, chapter twelve. The final chapter to the first trade paperback. And we start the last chapter off 27 years in the past. And we get some background, actually, on the house where Mr. Reed grew up. And it turns out that Promise was involved in putting Mr. Reed's family there in the first place. Because apparently this house was an epicenter to a lot of evil and um, it also kept... A lot of demons away it was hugely explained in the very beginning of this chapter but we find out how uh, Mr. E's family ended up moving into this house so he isn't the reason why Ranibus came out the house was already evil and everybody who's ever lived there has died somehow through that um, within living in that this house we then jump into the present where Mr. E is in an insane asylum and he is being blamed for uh, what Jack Faust has done in the previous issue, burning down the apartment complex. And also, it turns out that the uh, doctor <clears throat> it found out about other things, like remember the woman that jumped out the window with uh -huh. the evil baby, uh, about uh, his friend being burned alive, and he connected it all with Mr. E. So he believes, the doctor believes that, Mr. E is the one that's the evil person, and he's just claiming to be helping people, but he's really the one hurting them, pretending to help them. You, you know how psychologists work. Unfortunately, Mr. E tries to escape. It doesn't work. It turns out Jack Faust is still somehow involved. I don't want to say too, too much, but he does reach out to everybody, to other people that were in this first volume. And um, we see one panel with um, Charity... And it kind of just ends where he's stuck. 
he's stuck in this insane asylum and he finally admits that he needs help. Whoa. And that's where it leaves off. This was an excellent trade paperback. I enjoyed it thoroughly. All 12 chapters were one better than the next. As the book continued forward, the artwork was consecutive. The story was done really well. And I, I just really loved uh, Volume 1 of Mystery. Uh, now, with Volume 2, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a spoiler starting next week. Or I might take a week off from Mystery just to give you guys the, the ability to soak it in. Might be doing a comic book corner review of this book once I get the physical copy, which should be coming very soon. We're following the Kickstarter, and it looks like Kickstarter will they'll be um, it's in process, so very soon we'll be getting those. So when I get the physical book, I will be doing a review on Frontline. But I would definitely recommend Volume One of Mystery. Volume Two is going to take place in the past, though. So Volume Two is not a direct um, follow-up to Volume One. I will say that. And I will explain more when I go into issue number one. I will be doing it issue by issue is starting in two weeks. It's a four-issue series. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, by the time um, we get to issue four, which is a, maybe it's a possibility, it's a month from now or a month and a week from now, uh, I'll be able to do at least one with a physical copy in my hand so I can show you guys some artwork. But volume one is an excellent read. I highly recommend it. You can check it out at Devil's Do. Check out Dirk Manning. You just type in Tales of Mystery and it'll show up on your comic uh, on the website everywhere. I know Midtown has it. So you can find this book anywhere. Really great stuff. I really enjoyed um, Tales of Mystery. Okay. So with so, that now we go into this week's books. And oh boy, I get to start with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutanimals, issue number three. Now I cannot remember for the life of me if this is a four issue or five issue mini, but I believe it's five. And... Um, it's up to Slash and Mondo to save Old Hob and the others, as well as free the other two mutants that are being held uh, by Null. And let's just say, long story short, things don't go according to plan at first, and Slash and Mondo get captured, but then Slash kind of snaps, and all that intelligence he had disappears, and he goes back to the black dialogue bu oh, bubbles uh -huh. with the kind of like non uh oh what am, the uh, where he's more um evil. no before he got the shot that made him smart he's bad not evil but more uh, monstrous let's put it that way like the hulk kind of but isn't that the same thing but he snaps out of it sort of it's sort of the same thing and later on we find out in the conversation he has with hob that he voluntarily chose to lose it in order to save his friends because he knew there was no way um, to get around it, and he believes he's a monster, and this is where Old Hob, I, one of the best moments for Old Hob, where he says, um, say whatever you want, but don't you dare say you're as bad as them, that's not true, and it never will be, so one of the best moments for Old Hob, and he's also talking about a plan where he wants to destroy the laboratory, but one of the mutants they save says, you save, you destroy the laboratory, they'll build another one, you have to take Null out herself, and we get a little bit deeper into Null also, I hate Null, I really can't wait to see Hob uh, destroy her, and then um, Seymour makes a decision by the end of this issue, and it looks like um, things won't be going so well for Seymour by the end of this issue, uh, by the beginning of the next issue, I should say. Mutanimals is definitely a really great series. Getting reused to Andy Kun's artwork again is taking a bit of time, but issue three already, I'm kind of back into the swing of his artwork. Um, other than the artwork, the story is being told really nicely. If you're a fan of Slash or any of the Mute Animals, Old Hob, if you want an extra story with him, this is definitely the book for you. The Mutagen Man uh, shows up here. Mondo Gecko's in here. A lot of really great supporting characters from the Turtles are in this um, mini. Uh, for right now, I'm enjoying it for what it is. Uh, is it the best mini that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has produced? No, but it's still an enjoyable read, and I'm definitely excited to see what the next mini series is going to be from the Turtles. All right, and now we have two Zanscope books, Realm War, issue number nine of twelve. Three more issues left until the grand conclusion of Realm War, and to be honest, you know it's... what's really cool? We're going to be um, at special edition next month. In June, and that's when issue 11 comes out. I know. Or issue 10 comes out, and that'll only leave two issues left to go. So maybe we'll get some uh, info on what's to come in the last two issues or what uh, we could uh, possibly be expecting. Maybe some yeah. little 
tidbits. Yeah, so it starts off where uh, Cinderella meets up with the um, the Dark Queen, and um, basically what she's saying is that um, the Dark Queen just wants to, uh, you know, to rule Wonderland and everything, and how everything's chaotic, where uh, Selena is trying to uh, get her hands on the Dark Queen because of all of what's going Sheila. on. Sela. Sela? Oh, I'm sorry. Why do you think Selena? I'm sorry. Sela. I... I yeah, we're sorry about that. So, uh, she uh, teams up with uh, Brittany and Frost with her to stop, uh, she, like, Dark Queen sends out Robin, and you know how Robin Hood is, you know, she, with the arrows and everything, and Jack Frost has this intense fight with uh, Cinderella and all that other stuff, and um, then Sela has a fight with uh, Guidian. The one that, you know, like, she just wants to know, like, you know, how this happened, and I don't want to say how that fight went. You'll definitely have to, uh, read the book, but, um, it's just a huge fight scene, lots of explosions, and, um, lots of, uh, moments between, uh, Zila and Jack Frost there. <laughs> I thought that was something else. And, uh, let's just say that the Dark Queen has a very, uh, evil plan in mind. An ace, possibly, up her sleeve. Oh boy, it's getting very intense. You have got to buy this book or read it if you haven't, because this is really great stuff that's building up. So I hope the Dark Queen just gets an arrow between her eyes. Please let there be. And one. speaking of really great stuff that's building up, Grim Fairy Tales issue number 110, part 2 of 2 for Beowulf. And by the end of this issue, it actually leads into the next story arc. It's actually um, a connecting story arc. So, Wolf is fighting now um, in his realm against the monster's mother it attacks and Natalie is still very much injured from what's happened and this monster actually decides hey you killed my kin I'm gonna kill your friends too so where do you think he goes or she goes Arcane Acre mm -hmm. and Wolf decides to follow after however at Arcane Acre um oh god Mad Hatter what's her name I keep forgetting her name Callie or is it... Callie. Yeah, no, no. It's Callie, I believe. Yeah, because... Violet. You mean Violet? Violet. Yeah, because Callie is the other one. Right. Oh. Violet, Violet tricks Sky into... I always get those two... Reaching stuff. into the Convergence, which is where all the magic is. Remember, Arcane Acre is built right on top of the epicenter of magic on Earth. And she... Apparently, Violet is now being influenced by the Mad Hatter spirits within her. But that's when the monster shows up. That's when Wolf shows up. Huge, huge action in this book. And actually, Wolf and Ali have a moment in this where, uh, during the fight. And Violet, while all this is going on, Violet sends all the adults away, influenced again by the Mad Hatter. And Arcane Acre basically is shielded permanently. Or, I guess, for the time being. So the kids are trapped inside. The adults are trapped outside. Ali and Wolf are a big question mark, and now the Mad Hatter is free. Starting next month, the Mad Hatter. I'm really looking forward to next month's book. Uh, this has definitely been building up, and Wolf is back. So obviously, like I told you, Wolf was not going to remain suspended forever. He actually said, expel me to the other school because he wanted to follow after to protect his friends at Arcane Acre. This was an excellent read. As always, Patrick Shan does an excellent job. The artwork is gorgeous, as always. I'm really loving the new direction for Grim Fairy Tales. Uh, you know, it focused on Sela for over 100 issues, and now it's all about Sela running the school, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the new pace, uh, and I can't wait every month for the next issue. Grim Fairy Tales is my, by far, favorite ongoing series that comes out of um, Zenoscope each and every week. Now we go into the digital, starting with Boom Studios. Yep. Feathers, issue five of six. Yeah, only one more issue left to the grand finale. And it uh, starts with uh, Poe uh, going back to uh, his father, like saying, you know, like you were right about uh, all this and that, but you're not telling me something like you're hiding something. And the father doesn't tell him, so he just, you know, goes off and just says, you know, no more of this. I mean, Poe is kind of getting a little bit more of a... Uh, Kind of being a brat and being very mean towards his father and everything because he's trying to protect him. 
So the girl in the village encounters with that. Remember that uh, what we saw in the last issue with that the one with the red notes and everything. Yeah, she gets uh, talked to. Uh, talked to, and then Poe talks with R, who is part of the Ma the mice group, and uh, they have like this long dialogue of, uh, you know, like just to trust him and everything and what's been going on, like in the last issue, like to tell Z and the rest just to trust him because he wasn't the one that did all the killing. It was the one with the red notes that killed one of the groups because they thought that Poe killed them. It's a whole big thing, really, that uh, I don't want to spoil. So, um, yeah, he just tries to convince R to uh, let him, uh, you know, uh, be trusted. And lots of other uh, stuff happens, and it just gets, like, all over the place where, um, you know, Poe... Just meets up with uh, him in the end. I, I keep forgetting what his name was. And it just leaves us off at that. Where they just meet off with each other. And next month it being the last issue. I have a funny feeling it could go many, many directions. And that's what I like about this book. Really interesting. I like the artwork in this book especially. Yeah, the artwork was really good as well. Savage Dragon 203. Now, mm -hmm. I did skim through it and I saw the last page. I did too. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Don't you dare spoil it. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say I wasn't going to say it, actually, because that was just a big wow. That's all I'm saying. But it really starts off where uh, Malcolm learns about, you know, uh, like the blood type, what he gave to his father and everything. And the doctor, who was in the last issue, he gets this whole thing where he gets resurrected and turns to this whatever this thing is. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what it's called. Meanwhile, Malcolm's just saving the day, uh, saving the city and everything, and just, you know, and Tara Jones tries to call him, but uh, apparently Maxine doesn't like that she calls him, so he just deletes it and thinks that he rejected her calls. So uh, there was this whole big thing where uh, one of his friends, uh, Willard, says about these uh, Asian girls and stuff like that, and he got really uh, offended, Malcolm, and he just lets out this big, you know, uh, like, I go out with who I want to, nothing's going to change that. I like Maxine only, end of story, the end. So there's these uh, three new villains that actually come in uh, that are in this story. I can't remember what the names are for the life of me. They're like basically superhuman, so to say. And they're just causing lots of rampages in the city. And Malcolm, who's trying to get to school, you know, to do his test, is uh, being stopped at uh, doing so and just fights crime. And in a bad way, he gets badly injured. I am not going to spoil the end, because I saw Tara Jones. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. She has a message for him. She's got lots of explain due to Maxine. That's all I'm saying. I didn't spoil it. I'm just saying. The Wicked Divine. Issue number 10. The Wicked and the Divine. Yeah, issue, issue number, number 10. 10. Yeah, and in this story, there's like, uh, I, like I forgot what the girl's name was. Like, she's just trying to find out the case about. Remember when the Lucifer, when she snapped her fingers and the judge uh, died because the head exploding? Well, they still think that she is really the devil, and uh, the girl who's doing the report is trying to um, figure out a way of how it didn't happen. So one of uh, they go to a story, go up a little bit, not down, not the, where, where it starts to, uh, Duncan Ockford. Basically, they talk about um, his theory of why they think that he was behind all this because it had something to do with snapping of the fingers that maybe he was the one in spirit that did it to make Lucifer look like that she's the devil, really, because of the name. So there's like a whole big thing that it goes into where um, that happens. And uh, there are lots of magic that's uh, used in this. But it's really just talking about the the, the case about... Um, Duncan? About, no, about um, Lucifer, about how she really didn't do it. So I'm trying to figure out what the main character's name is. Um... Because she, she's actually the one that's doing all that. But anyway, whatever her name is. So, uh, the person who is actually talking with Duncan, actually, I believe, 
the way it looked like might be possessed by him at the end of the issue and from what I saw from the last issue and this issue with him being that powerful and everything that's um gonna be I think her name is L Laura. Laura yeah Laura I think that's what her name is or Cassandra no it was Cassandra the journalist Cassandra that was her name that's doing the whole uh, mystery case, but uh, really great stuff. And this one, this oh book man. I read also. John oh, Carter, blah, 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 blah. John Carter, Warlord of Mars, issue number six. The fight mm, between the fight. was his name Clark. Was it? It was Clark versus I think uh, his name is is against John Carter. The fight was amazing. And you have uh, also what was it? Captain Clark. Yeah, I was right. Mm -hmm. So while they're fighting, what uh, John doesn't know is that Deja is being De taken away by um, T T T Tars, 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 or whatever his name. Yeah, was. whatever his name. Well, is. basically abducted her to make her his uh, lover and everything because they were fighting. So. It just focused on the fight scene. I really love the artwork. Like I, I can actually see mm -hmm. the fight actually happening. That's how the artwork made it so amazing. And they're just fighting for just the land. Like if John wins, he leave. Clark has to leave. But if Clark kills John Carter, then he kills John Carter. Like what happened in the last issue. So um, really intense. And uh, I'm not going to say... I mean, I mean, we all know who wins, but I'm not going to say how he won. So, meanwhile, John Carr sees that uh, DJ gets kidnapped, and he confronts him. Vush. Yeah, Vush, yeah. Goes to Vush, and uh, basically, uh, DJ helps, you know, like, throw him overboard and everything, and then that's how he probably died, because we all know that there's going to be something. And then that's the end of the book. So John Carter wins and the entire world The next world issue is, is lo Love Among the Ruins, so... Yeah, there's still It's more continuing to go. on, and I'm happy about that, that's for I sure. I know, me too, because I was really hoping that it wasn't the conclusion and that was it. I really wanted there to be more. Alright, we got Masks 2, issue number 2. Yeah, and in this issue, it just focused on two characters uh, who are... Um, these chicks, I can't remember what their names were. Like, they had a fight, and of course they wound up teaming up. Of course, because it always happens. Um, I think it was. Um, oh, what was the name? They called her, I think, Hornet. I believe. Could be. Well, she looks like a cat one, more or less. Mm -hmm. From what they, from what uh, the, the description is. And then she meets up with, um, I, I really am so with these names. Tonight. The characters you're not familiar with. I'm not, I'm not really familiar with these characters, but basically they have a fight scene. They see these skull people who are coming in because we saw from last issue that they don't mean really good business. And so saying, you know, let's just finish these guys off, team up, and then we'll finish what uh, we started then. And then there's like a whole big thing of a background story about who they were. Which was really interesting. I liked uh, their backstory. Um, Miss Fury. Yeah, Miss Fury had her backstory about uh, her childhood life, as uh, the other one had the other one differently. And it was like one was really uh, something else, and one was sad actually. Depend, you know, with their differences and stuff. So uh, they work out together to um, see what's. Uh, how how to get rid of these uh, skull people because they don't mean really good business like I said before. Oh, the spider shows yeah, up. Yeah, we see the spider that actually shows up uh, at the scene, and uh, he just wants to figure out you know uh, like what happened and stuff like that throughout the whole middle of the uh, chaos, and it just sends off like that. So um, it, it was a pretty good issue. It was okay. All right, we got Angel and Faith. Season 10, issue 14. It's them versus... El El oh, God, I'm going to say this name wrong. El Elan uh, Elaria. 
Ilaria? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Ilaria. And Ko shows up, and he wants revenge against Ilaria because Ilaria admits she's the one that destroyed his clan and his family. They, himself, Angel, and Faith get the snot beat out of them because Ilaria is very strong. She's basically a god. However, because of what was going on in Magic Town, and Angel tries to reach out to Ilaria because Ilaria says, you know, you just used me. You didn't, you know, you never loved me. You just wanted to use me. And he's like, I always cared about Fred and you. And then we go into Ilaria's mind where Fred is, and she is fighting Ilaria saying, you know, we are about both coexisting now. Ever since magic was restored and we were in Magic Town, I'm stronger now. And um, you're going to listen to me and um, we're going to either coexist or we're both going to die. I'm going to end this once and for all. And then Fred kind of retakes control of herself and she pushes Ilaria inside of her mind. Now, Angel isn't sure if Ilaria let her do it or if there actually is a balance finally, and he's worried about Fred and what's going to happen next. You get that whole, it was good having you back, you know, um, if I ever, um, the whole Angel and Fate business anymore, she's like, I got your back no matter what, and he says, thanks. Co visits with, um, I forgot what her name was. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I always... Her name just completely left my mind. The woman that's connected to Magic Yeah, that's Town. like the second time, because I can't really remember it either. And I remember we talked about her. But basically, Ko knows he has to, you know, deal with things, adapt, and move on. And that's what he's planning to do. And then we find out that Magic Town is very worried about Fred and Ilaria. And this girl's like, you're Magic Town. You know, things are going to happen no matter what. But you're still young and you're Magic Town. You're still strong. And that's where the issue leaves off. So, chapter is done. Moving on from here. Or maybe we're going into Season 11. I don't think so. I don't think yet. But I'm loving it. The artwork's really great. The writing's really good. The story is just spectacular. If there's any book I could recommend, now I read Buffy the Vampire Slayer also, but Angel and Faith is my favorite of the um, of the two. Okay, how much uh, time we got? Let me make sure. Maybe we'll go on a click of a button. Whoa, yes. Yeah. All right, guys, we have three books left, so give us just two seconds and we'll continue uh, at the click of a button. All right, and we're back, and we are now at The Witcher. Fox Children issue yep. two of five. And I'm going to be completely honest. I thought this issue was kind of boring. And I'm going to tell you why I thought it was boring. The artwork was still the same. I mean, it was still like great artwork and everything. But it was really all talking. That's what it was. And the dialogue was really Sitting heavy. in a boat talking. That's really yeah, all it looks that's like. That's all it was. They were just sitting in the boat talking, and they meet up with this demonic snake where they're like, Witcher, Witcher, what's your, uh, Gar, Gar, Garak, or however you say it. Garrett. Man. Garrett, what should we do? Like, they all go to him for all these sources, and thinking that he's the whole, you know, I mean, I understand. Oh, okay, here's some action. Everything. They get attacked. Yeah, they get attacked and everything, but it's really just, that, that, that's the only good part of the book. Just that part alone. And of course meeting up with that woman because I know that woman's going to play a, a part in the story. You know, the the demonic uh, woman and everything. But all it was is like saying, Garat, we ha have a problem. You got to solve it. Just use your, your powers and everything. I mean, c come on. Well, that's yeah. what he does. Yeah, but they're using him. I mean, I understand, like I said before, I understand he fights demons. But seriously, turn the boat around and don't go forward. Right? You're, you're, sentencing, you're sentencing a death sentence if you keep going forward. But uh, I'll give it another issue just because I read Witcher, so I'll see how the next issue goes. Alright, this is from Valiant. Dead Drop, issue number one, and it yeah. involves Exo. Yeah. Oh, no, actually, it involves uh, Arik. That's Exo Man of War. Yeah, yeah, but it's the Arik, not the Livewire Exo. Okay. Arik, yeah. that's who I meant. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were meaning Lyra, but anyway, yeah. So, it talks about just Eric, and um, he's really a wanted vigilante throughout the city. Like, nobody really likes him because, well, the policemen don't really like him because apparently they see him as a threat to the city. So, uh, and this was, like, really weird. I thought everybody uh, had uh, was in his debt because of all that he did, but apparently I felt like I was in a different universe for real. From where he was actually, and uh, you know we get a little bit of a backstory about him uh, for those of you who who didn't know about 
Eric, uh, this would definitely be the book for you. But um, he's just saying, you know, um, like, I don't know, like, uh, what I did, what you want me for, but, you know, I'm just, because uh, he has, like, this uh, blood type or a virus that he's trying to prevent. And this girl takes it away from him, and we get some action of Arak trying to uh, receive it back from her. And, um, you know, the artwork was uh, really... I like the artwork, that I will say. Yeah, the artwork was really drawn perfectly. And, um, basically, uh, she gets away with the virus, and uh, the mission has been... Uh, to be continued. To be continued. <laughs> I like so this. I this is a that. really good... This looks like it's going to be a really good story. Yeah, and then uh, Neville just says, you know, do exactly what I tell you to do or you'll die. Because of uh, the whole virus that got escaped. So, uh, I really like that. I just really uh, didn't think that he would be wanted by policemen. That's That was what shocked me the most, in a good way. So, the story was really good. Alright, finally this week, Samurai Jack issue 19 now. Mm -hmm. Um... I forgot his first name. Something um, here. Uh, Jim uh, Zub is actually moving on to a different book, so I think that we oh, might be is? seeing the end of the days of Samurai Jack. Oh, I thought that he, there was going to be more. Because I was reading the book, actually, and I really liked how Samurai Jack has a mission, but... Artwork looks a little yeah, different. And it's with the dogs, actually. And I like how uh, when he wants something to eat, he tried like one of the dog bones. I thought that was really funny. But anyway, so what uh, they're trying to do is that they're finding this uh, evil spirit that possesses dogs. So he finds the spirit that says, you know, I want tribute. And he possesses the dogs that were with him to fight against uh, Samurai Jack. So he's like saying, I want tribute. And he's like saying, want tribute here. Gives the dog bones to the spirit, and uh, I guess he made a, do a little doggy friend with him uh, at the end with the spirit, and hmm. um, yeah, that was uh, really something. And no, it says oh, finale. Oh, Samurai Jack finale. The grand finale is issue 20. Oh, I, d I did not see that. Now, that's, wow. After 20 issues, I can't believe it. Let's see, look at that. I answered it right there, and it was right there in the book also. I, I didn't even see that cover, because I, I just read it, and I just tried to absorb it. Well, there's a lot of books coming door, out, you know, know, with the summer coming up. we got to have know. lots of number ones. That's we got why Secret I'm Wars. trying to keep my mind all yes. functional and everything. So, guys, that's it for this week's Indie Comic Book Review. As always, don't forget to check our comic-related Comic Frontline Zone 4 podcast and Frontline Gaming Zone. Together, we are your number one source for comic-related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. Lots to come. Uh, Big Two will be tomorrow. Uh, we are filming this on Monday. We're a day late, unfortunately. Un and the reason we have to film Big Two um, tomorrow, or actually no, Wednesday, uh, mm -hmm. will be because we have um, we don't have time tonight because we have uh, early work, both of us, tomorrow. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. we can only do one show tonight. Maybe if the live show doesn't go so late tomorrow, we'll um, do it tomorrow night, but... Let's see how things go. Maybe we'll actually maybe we'll do a double header tonight, but it's not going to be uploaded tonight. It'll probably be uploaded uh, Wednesday night. Yeah. So maybe we'll try to do the double header. Yeah, we'll we'll because we'll it's still we'll early. Do. Let's see. It's We're gonna early. see after we do this video if we do the double header, but it won't go up until at least uh, Wednesday morning. Either way, because I can only upload one of these at a time because of the rendering program. So right. till then, guys, take care, keep reading, keep collecting. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Later, we'll goodbye. see you guys in the next review. Yes. Hey, everybody.